Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be a little different, but it's going to be very interesting. And I've been thinking a lot about this over the last couple months. Who is actually making decisions? Now, up until this point, I fully believed that the big banks and the people who control the monetary supply are the ones that are making all the decisions. They control monetary policy. They can decide who's going to get an excess amount of funds to go do whatever they want to do with it. They can, can decide who's going to be cut off. You know, they can buy up everything and they can have that level of control over the media, over education, over pharmaceuticals, over corporate America, over all these things, right? So up until this point, I believe that it's been the banking cartel that has had the most power and control within the world and they're the primary decision makers. Now, the people that I have on the screen, I don't believe that they're the final decision makers. I think that they're more figureheads than anything else. And there's probably people over top of them that have been uh, in, in very... Um, powerful positions for many, many years, their families, right? But as far as, you know, these people will serve for this video um, as the, the face of the banking, the global banking cartel, right? And I'm not trying to say cartel is in just the word that I'm using for this particular um, discussion. Now, on the left side of your screen, I have the technologists, some very prominent technologists. Um, and, and what I think is happening right now is I think that we're seeing a changing of the guard and I think we're starting to see the natural evolution from the banking giants running everything and making all the decisions. And I think over the next 10 to 20 years, I don't think it's going to happen like in the next six months, but I think over the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to start seeing the technologists be the main decision makers and the ones that are really controlling how society is shaped moving forward. I'm going to lay out my case for why I believe that. This is not like an insignificant question. It's actually pretty important. Um, it gives you a better understanding of what's coming down the road. If you understand who are the people who are making the decisions, what their incentives are, and where they want to take everyone else. Okay. So this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So do your own research, make your own decisions. So let's lay out both side by side here. Technologists can write and understand the code, okay? They can influence the way people think, act, and they can change reality, okay? People are on their phones every day, continually taking in information, and they can control the algorithms, what's pushed out to them, and they can show them the world that they want them to see and the narratives that they want them to believe, okay? This is a level of power that I can't even really comprehend, all right? They are the true innovators, okay? They shape the future. Bankers are not innovators, okay? They, they, they're just the ones that sit next to the money printer and that have all the power and control because they sit next to the money printer. But the last part that I wanna go over here is probably the most important. Almost no checks and balances in tech because only they understand it, okay? Government can't regulate tech companies because they don't understand it. And honestly, bankers probably can't to, to, to very to, to that much of a degree have that much influence or power or control over the technologists because they don't really understand exactly what it is that they're doing. OK, not, you know, maybe on a general level, but down to like the code itself. Uh, you know, a lot of these, you know, for the most part, the technologists can do whatever they want to do. They can make alterations or adjustments within the code, within the algorithms that produce a different result within the people that are receiving all that information. Okay. And that is just a level of power that's insane. Okay. So an example of this would be somebody like Sundar Pichai, right? He's, you know, CEO of Google. Let's say that he makes some modifications and some adjustments with the way that you know search engine works, with the way that you know YouTube algorithms work and the feed and everything else, and that that has a huge impact on the way that millions, billions of people think, perceive information, what they believe is reality, and he could do all of this with nobody knowing. Okay, nobody would really know. It would. It's so subtle and it's so embedded in everything that we use, that it would be very hard to detect any type of little subtle difference like that, okay? And, and these individuals would have very little ability to have any checks and balances over that because at the top level of tech, there's only a certain amount of comprehension and understanding that you can have if you don't have that same knowledge base. OK, so that's why I think that we might be watching a changing of the guard from the banking cartel moving over to the technologists for the next 10 to 20 years. But I do think they have mutual interests. OK, 
All right, so the bankers, they control the monetary supply, they set fiscal policy, they can issue funds arbitrarily for certain people that they want to succeed and certain people that they want to fail. They can also influence the way people think, act, and change reality through the ownership of the media. So both of them have the ability to influence the way people think, act, and they can change reality. Okay, however, when you're watching TV and you're watching the mainstream media, only a, a small percentage of people actually do that on a daily basis. But almost everybody is on their phone and on social media regularly throughout day to day, week to week. Okay, so right there, you're reaching a much wider audience through technology as opposed to traditional media on the television. Now, there's a caveat here because more than likely, the individuals on the left side of your screen. While they, I'm not taking anything away from them and their brilliance as far as you know their innovations that they've created, but I also, you know, they got in that position with some help from the big bankers, in my opinion. You look at how Elon Musk and his company, again, nothing against Elon Musk, but you know, you look at carbon credits and you look at all the tax uh, rebates and all the things that have allowed Tesla to become what it is, and one could make a case that you know they paved the way for him to get there. And it's the same thing with the social media giants, with Google, with Twitter, with Facebook. Okay, They went back and they made regulation or they made um, certain laws to prevent people from being able to sue them right? in almost every scenario. Okay, And it's very difficult to sue them. And even if you do have a legitimate case, you have to go up against you know, the, their trillion dollar companies and all the lawyers and resources that they have. But that was a law that was put in place by politicians. OK, so they did the exact same thing for the pharmaceutical industry back in the mid 80s. OK, you know, went for getting, you know, the shot in the side of your arm. Um, there were a lot of lawsuits that were popping up because of adverse reactions. So what Reagan did back in the 80s is they changed the law and you can no longer sue them in almost every single scenario. You have to go through what's called a, it's, it's a court that is set up within government and they serve as the middle person between the the plaintiff and the pharmaceutical company, okay? So you, have, you essentially have to go through the government to be able to sue a pharmaceutical company if you have any type of a reaction or adverse effects of something like that, okay? So, but I believe that, you know, the bankers completely control the politicians for the most part. And because of that, those politicians have made favorable laws paving the way for a lot of people that are on the left side of your screen. Okay, that's just my personal opinion, but I felt there's a lot of historical evidence to back that up. So both of them do have very similar you know, levels of influence to some degree, but I think that as tech continues to evolve, especially over the last five years, we're starting to see the technologists and their products have more influence over people than the banking system. Okay, so other things to consider here. Bankers can have a huge influence allowing certain technologies and individuals to prosper. That's what we just went over. And at some point, tech does reach a higher level of influence than the monetary policy and distribution. And I think that we're at that point. I don't think that they're completely in control of everything and they're the ultimate decision makers, but I do think that we are seeing a changing of the guard from one to the other. And it's going to be a gradual process that takes place over the next 10 years. Technologists are inherently more intelligent. This might be the most important part. They're inherently more intelligent than a traditional banker who is in that position through merit, personal connections, and inheritance. Okay, so if you look at somebody like a Janet Yellen, right, or uh, Christine Lagarde, or somebody like this, I'm not taking anything. I'm sure they're you know intelligent people, and back in their back in their heyday, they you know were, were very you know very intelligent people. Same thing with Jamie Dimon, Jerome Powell, so on and so forth. But they're not on the same intellectual playing field as Sundar Pichai, as Jack Dorsey, as Elon Musk, as Peter Thiel, as all these other innovative individuals who are really building the future that you know we are moving into. OK, so I put Peter Thiel with an asterisk down here because Peter Thiel back in 1999, he predicted exactly what we are going through right now. OK, he described a system for a monetary you know, system that is exactly like cryptocurrency. And on top of that, he helped get Vitalik started with a hundred thousand dollar grant back when he was starting Ethereum. So this goes to show that, you know, a technologist, a very wealthy technologist, entrepreneur, however you want to refer to him, can, you know, through their own ideas and what their, you know, picture is for the future, can create something that becomes so widespread 
you know, comes adopted on, on, at scale across the world that you just can't compare the amount of influence that one has to the other, all right? Um, now, mutual interests between both groups. I think that that's extremely likely because they all have been coordinating together for years and years and years. And you think about the implementation of cryptocurrency and blockchain, which I'm gonna go over that at the end of the video. This was the most brilliant plan ever constructed. Okay, I mean, th this is so insane. I mean, this was absolutely brilliant. When this hit me, the day that this hit me, I was like, oh, this is, this is so, it's so incredible that something could happen that's this big that affects everybody all around the world and nobody knows what's going on. And it, they had the thought that they could even pull this off is incredible. Right. I, 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 you know, detest all of these individuals. Right. I mean, I really do. That being said, I can acknowledge brilliance with this particular rollout because it was brilliant. It really is. People still don't know what's going on. Many people in crypto don't know what's going on because of the way that they've rolled this out, the amount of propaganda that's come out, the amount of distractions that's come out, and the amount of you know social engineering that's taken place over the last five to ten years. Okay, so I went over the thing about you know okay so at any point in time, right? They can make adjustments, alterations with their code, with their technology, with their algorithms, and who's going to know? Who would know? Right. Let's just say that for whatever reason today, they made some adjustments and they started pushing out other things to you through your social media. But it was very subtle. OK, it wasn't so over the top that it was obvious, but it was very subtle. OK, and, and that happening repeatedly over a one to two to five year period where they're showing you certain things that they want you to see that would have an effect on the way that you see the world and, and what you're actually paying attention to and what's important to you. Okay. And, and what I'm trying to say is that regardless of what, let's just say that the bankers put them in that position and that they funded them and that they really set them up and going with the assumption that the bankers are still completely in control of what these guys are doing. It's hard to wrap my mind around that because they, they don't understand what these guys are doing. Okay. They can tell them to do X, Y, and Z, but these guys are, you know, some of the richest people in the world and they could just say, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Okay. I'm just going to write the code the way that I want to write it. I'm going to push X, Y, and Z because I want to do this. And who's going to be able to have any real checks and balances on them because nobody else really understands exactly what it is that they do. It's so complex to where you really have to be at the, and not just to write code, okay? Anybody, you know, a lot of people write code, but these individuals are at the top tier of technological developments. And again, I just don't see how we're not going to see a changing of the guard over the next 10 to 20 years because of how far technology has advanced over the last 10 years. Pros and cons as tech evolves, makes things possible that were not previously possible. Okay, I was not able to do this back when I was first getting into college. Okay, there was not that many people on social media. And I just, you know, the, social media and technology and the internet have opened the door for so many things. I have learned so much off of, off of watching YouTube videos and off of doing Google searches. Okay, the, the amount of information that I have taken in and the level of understanding that I have about certain things is immensely higher because of the internet, because of this phone, because of YouTube, because of Google. And that's just the reality of the situation. As much as I really detest what these individuals do, the ideology that they push and the level of censorship, as much as I really detest that and the amount of deception that takes place, I can appreciate that the products and services has made a dramatic impact on my mind and my overall understanding about a lot of different things, okay? But there are cons here, okay? you become more efficient. Technology makes things more efficient. It's just the way that it works. It leads to a better understanding of certain things. It makes people smarter. There's an asterisk here because it does make some people dumber, which is crazy to, to see. But you know, when you put out all information that exists and you can access it through your phone, uh, there's going to be a lot of bad information out there, right? That's what they call misinformation, right? Now, misinformation is key word for something that's true now, but, you know, in a traditional sense, right, misinformation would be some false information that was making people believe things that were not true, okay? So, you know, when you expose people to all information that exists, a lot of people are going to gravitate to the information that, you know, whatever maybe confirms their bias or maybe it's so compelling that they believe that it's true, even though it has no basis in reality. 
The cons, the control, it's way too much control. The manipulation that takes place with the way people think. They, they, people can lose touch with reality. Many people have lost touch with reality. I'd say maybe the majority of people have lost touch with reality to some degree. AI makes decisions and not people. And who, know where, who knows where that leads? When, when supercomputers are making decisions for everybody else, as opposed to you know, people making decisions for people, who knows where that leads? Potential loss of values and ethics. Conclusion, I think we are in a transitionary period. Uh, for the last 100 years, I think that bankers have most likely made all the decisions as controlling the monetary system would give them the most influence over the population. That's what we're talking about, is who has the most influence over the most amount of people, because that's really who's in charge, in my opinion. We are getting to the point where technology has more influence over individuals than solely having control over the monetary system and the existing infrastructure, schools, companies, healthcare media companies in healthcare. And to this point, schools are going digital. They're going all online. Media companies all going online, right? There's, there's been the, the, the birth of, you can start your own media company. To be honest with you, I'm probably going to start my own media company. It's going to be a small thing, right? It's going to be like newsletters and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I might you know, look on expense, but I really do want to do this down the road, right? I have, I have so much, you know, hatred towards the mainstream media for how much they've lied to people that, you know, my only real solution is either to just be angry about it or to do something about it and just to try to reach as many people as I can. So I think long term, that's what I'm going to do. And then until, you know, they, they wipe me off the Internet for, you know, saying things that are misinformation. And then healthcare is also moving uh, you know to a more digital type of an environment to where you can just, you know, FaceTime a doctor and they prescribe you whatever it is that they prescribe you and that's it. So even with the existing infrastructure that the bankers have controlled for years and years and years, they are going to need the technologists to make the transition from these things being in person or on your TV to these things being more online and everything on your phone. They have a general agreement of the future. I do believe this is the case. However, it's hard to really know. You know, I mean, that's the reason that I'm doing this video is because I think that this is important. Now, having no understanding or even not even a guess or a hypothesis on who's making the decisions, who's pulling the strings. I mean, you know, I, just me personally, and some people don't think like this, okay? A lot of people don't think like, they don't care. They don't, they don't care. They don't want to know. They don't want to ask questions. And I just, I can't, I can't do that, right? Like if I have to know if I'm being lied to, okay? I'm not going to accept, accept something as truth or this is the way things are without looking into it myself and making my own decision. Okay, so I, I think that, but some people just gen generally don't care and they could, they just don't care, right? They're just fine being lied to for their entire lives. But I do believe the technologists and the bankers do have um, a mutual agreement moving forward. And so I think that what we're seeing right now is the banking cartel, right? They are accumulating all the resources that they possibly can, okay? They're, they're not hiding what they're doing. They are printing to infinity. That does two things. It, it creates, it has two solutions. One, it devalues the currency and it, and it expedites the transition from the current system to the new system. So it benefits in that way, but also this allows them to have a free for all and buy up every single thing that's out there, buy up all the companies, buy up all the land, buy up all the houses, buy up everything they can buy up all the, you know, the, the, the resources that they can buy up. Um, so that as we do make this transition over the next 10 to 20 years, they still have so much power and control because they own so much and you have to go to them for loans, for rent, for whatever it may be. There will still be people dependent on the government, on government assistance, UBI, which will likely be distributed through the banks. Okay, so there's still going to be banks. I think the banks are going to become primarily custodians for digital assets. I think that that's what banks will transition to is, you know, if you used a particular bank, right, they're going to transition towards more of just custodying your crypto and your digital assets, okay? And then I'm sure they'll they'll lend that out through whatever, you know, but I don't think that we're ever going to be going back to a, you know, fractional reserve banking because it was so corrupt. And if you're going to be moving to blockchain and everything being open source, um, they're not going to be able to get away with the same things that they did in the old, you know, fiat uh, Ponzi scheme. Okay, so I think there's going to be two classes of people outside of the elites. 
And so there's elites there in their own class, right? But there's outside that there's going to be two classes of people. And I think that there's going to be the people who are dependent on UBI and government assistance. And then there's going to be people who are self-sufficient through their own employment and or investments. Okay? And I think that that's how, you know, people are going to be separated moving forward outside of the elite class. Tech is a double-edged sword, in my opinion. So using modern tech, social media can open doors and create opportunities. None of us, none of us would be in a position where we are being early investors to cryptocurrency and setting ourselves up to, you know, be, you know, financially independent and genera generationally wealthy if we did not use this technology, okay? Let's just say that we weren't on any social media. And I, again, I, I love YouTube, but I'm not on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything like that, because I generally hate social media, but YouTube is a tool that I use to gain information and to get information out, okay? That's it. Um, okay, so if it was not for that though, none of us would know what's going on here. Okay, we would just be drawing assumptions based on really no information whatsoever. Okay, so while there are downsides to technology and algorithms and, you know, manipulation, deception, all those other things, um, if you understand the game and you can navigate the waters, um, you can position yourself to be very successful. All information ever is on the internet. Any type of education that you need, you can find it on the internet, on YouTube, through Google, whatever it may be. Cutting yourself off from tech would probably help with overall mental health. I can personally attest to this. After I got off Facebook, Instagram, Twitter a couple of years, three, four years ago, uh, I just remember feeling just, I didn't have the same level of stress or frustration about certain things because I wasn't seeing all the crap that I would see every single day on social media. Okay, YouTube is a lot different and in that regard. And I, I do think that you know, limiting technology does help overall mental health. That being said, if you cut yourself off completely, let's just say that I get off YouTube, whatever, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just living my life, no social media, no nothing. I'm not, I'm not keeping up with the news, whatever it may be. Okay, then I would not be positioned to be an early investor to the new technology that is going to run the future of everything. Okay, so there, there is there. You have to find a balance. I feel like, and I think that we're, we'll have to do that in the future too. Um, I'm just speaking for myself personally here. I'm not as much as I do want to disconnect completely from everything, and to some degree, I will do that. But I will stay connected to this degree to where I understand what's happening with the new internet, with the new economy, with new investments, with new artificial intelligence, I'll stay connected enough to understand what's going on with that to where I can position myself to benefit financially. Okay. And to where I understand it enough to where I'm not, I don't fall victim to, you know, brainwashing, deception, propaganda, all those other things. So I do think it's important to find a balance between the two based on the individual and their overall, you know, what they want to get out of what they're doing. This is the big point that I want to go over, and I, I really might have to write a book about this because this has just been the, the, the greatest trick ever played on a global population. The, the implementation of crypto and blockchain is the greatest trick that's ever been played on a global population. And I almost want to become so independently wealthy and to, to, to have a bigger voice over the next 10 to 15 years. I almost want to do that only for this purpose, to be able to meet some of these or to be able to talk to some of these people and, and get an understanding of how this all happened. Because this, when you really look at it, okay, this is not all by accident. This has been years and years and years and years in the making. And the fact that all of this is going on and less than 10% of people even know what's going on. Listen, half of the people in cryptocurrency don't understand what they're invested in. They don't understand this is the new internet, which is mind blowing, right? But even beyond that, the rest of the 90% of the population has no idea what's going on right now. And that's because of all the propaganda, all the you know mental conditioning, all the other distractions, all of those other things. I mean, this, this has been rolled out so brilliantly and what people will believe is they, they'll just believe that this was a natural evolution of the economy, of currency, of markets, of all of those things. They'll actually believe, many people believe that this is real counterculture, that they're fighting back against the system, okay? And to some degree, you are, right? And, and to some degree, you still could do that, depending on how this all plays out, right? But, you know, they, they have no comprehension that the people in charge are, 
are running the show essentially. Uh, more, more or less, more or less, okay? Um, so this has been the greatest trick that's ever been played on humanity. And even now, people just don't get it. People don't understand what's going on. And, you know, that is by design. So, I mean, this is, if, if you need any more evidence that technology has advanced to a point to where they can do whatever they want to do and nobody will have any idea what's going on, this is it right here. Look around. Go ask somebody about cryptocurrency. I have no idea what you're talking about. Even people who are, I had a conversation the other day with, you know, somebody um, through work. And I mean, this guy makes over, over half a million a year, easy, every single year. And very, you know, business savvy, has a lot of business acumen, but completely everything with crypto straight over his head, has no understanding what's going on. And he works in the tech space. Okay. So it's, the fact that they've been able to pull this off and people have no idea is so insane that, I mean, I'm telling you, when this, when this all hit me, I was like, this is the most brilliant thing ever constructed in the history of the world. And, you know, I have, you know, I, I genuinely hate the way that people have been deceived and lied to and so on and so forth. But I can also acknowledge the brilliance and the level of deception that has taken place. I mean, I, I was like in awe. I really, I still am to some degree. I, I sit back and I'm just like, I, this is mind blowing that they, they can do this and people have no idea. I mean, you have to be able to appreciate, you know, brilliance to some degree, even if it's done in a malicious, I say malicious, um, because there, there might not be all malicious. I don't necessarily think there's a lot of good that's going to come out of this, right? This is going to open the doors for so many different people who would not have had those doors open beforehand. That being said, the amount of deception, propaganda, and lies that have been told, and the effect that that's had, where only 10% of people are even in cryptocurrency. And out of that 10%, only half of them actually know what this is. So, I mean, that is a testament to how much control these people have and how much they can influence the way people think. And I think that we'll just see this continue and expedite as technology advances, especially as the new technology is rolled out. Um, they'll be able to create their own reality. They will be able to eliminate history, write their own history. You know, it, so understand that, you know, this is, this is a, the, the world is changing and it's going to change forever. Um, and, you know, staying informed is very important. It's going to be very important moving forward because we're in a time of mass deception. For all we know, we've been in mass deception forever, right? For all we know, they've been lying to the, the masses for, you know, decades, you know, all the way back to, you know, 1900. And for all we know, it's always been like this. Just the internet was able, allowed us to, to see that uh, more so than not having the internet and not being exposed to all that information. So yeah, that's all I got for this video. Just want to give you my thoughts. I know this was kind of uh, a little bit all over the place, but I did want to bring this up because I think it's important. And I think that, uh, you know, you should probably, you know, stay, you know, just, just keep an eye on all this moving forward. And I think the biggest thing is understanding the balance between the virtual world world and the real world and being able to use the technology as a tool to improve your life, but not let it control your life, okay? Because I know I've gotten into that situation multiple times where it just controls everything. I'm just like this all day long. Um, and I think that that's not good for people's mental health. I'm not trying to you know, give anybody life advice or anything like that, but you know, it's, uh, I think finding a balance is, is a balance that works for you is the best thing that people can do for themselves, especially moving forward, um, because people are just going to start breaking mentally. They really, they're already breaking down mentally, and we're going to see that continue as time goes on, especially as the digitization of everything uh, continues to grow. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you, everyone who's liked, share, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm interested to hear what you think about this and, you know, understand, you know, if you say certain things that are, you know, go outside of the realm, the, the, the guidelines of YouTube, they'll probably delete your comment. Um, but, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd like to hear it. And yeah, thank you everyone who's liked, share, and subscribe. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.